Greetings to you all. I'm Dara. This is Dear Hallmark. We're in love ever after season. I was about to head out and I'm thinking, let me record this because it's Wednesday. And if I wait any longer, we're going to be thinking about mixed up in the Mediterranean. First of all, can we shout out my shirt from my bookish in studio? Lucy and Evan and Peter and Susan and Aslan. Okay, and we're back. Playing Cupid. This is the Valentine's weekend premiere movie for the Hallmark kids and family. Um, I literally watched it this morning and I have thoughts. But before we hear my thoughts, you're gonna hear what this movie is about. Cue Carrie Fox. Carrie Fox is a recent, um, she moved from Oregon to Seattle. She's a middle school teacher with all the, like she's all the rage, all the kids love her and she's new there. Even her new teacher friend is like, girl, what you doing? How you got all these kids like you? And I've been here for years. <laughs> but um, she's just, like you can tell there's something else going on in the water with her. And we find out when she meets her boyfriend for their one year anniversary, first of all, interracial boyfriend, hello. Um, but uh, they, so they meet at Cantina Corazon. And um, he's late, an hour late. And come to find out, homie had drinks with his colleagues at work before coming to dinner with her. And they were actually celebrating their one year anniversary. So I'm like, dang, Daniel. You trifling for that one. He was trifling for that one. Uh, his name is Adam, by the way. And mm, that'll preach. Adam was trifling, blaming the woman. I'm back. So Adam, like they, they're talking and she's like, what, what, what is happening? I moved here for you. And now you fin like you're not even gonna talk to me for two weeks. I haven't seen you in two weeks and you blow me off for drinks with your cronies at work. And he said, "You, y'all, this is what his comeback was. He said, Carrie, my career and I are a package deal. What kind of foolishness? Oh, my goodness. So she sends him packing. Literally, she dismisses him. He leaves. The owner of the restaurant comes, offers her a drink, and gets her a burrito because she's like, oh my gosh, this, you know, it's horrible. So then cut to the middle school, her actually teaching. And pause, the name of the middle school is Austin Middle School, which if you didn't know already, they've been promoting playing Cupid to be inspired by Jane Austen's Emma. So they in Austin is spelled A U S T E N like Jane Austen's last name. So I I you're you I see what you did there, Hallmark. So Austin Middle School, we don't actually know what subject she teaches, but um she assigns the kids a project to create, develop, and run their own business for I think five to six weeks. And they literally like go through it in terms of inventory, marketing, oper like they go through the whole kit. And I'm thinking, what kind of middle school? I wish I had a middle school like that, that could teach me that. And like what middle school? I'm just, I'm just boggled by the curriculum of middle schools. Maybe, I don't, I don't even know, but I was just shocked that that was even a project for middle school. Um, and so the one kid that the movie begins to center around is Clara. We can tell Clara's been going through some things. She's not doing well in school. However, she, when she's at her dad's restaurant doing homework with her friend, she sees that um, another teacher from her school comes in to order something. And she sees the way she's looking at this dude. She sees the way the dude looking at her. And she's like, I see what's going on. Let me, get, let me be the catalyst for this joint. So she actually gets them talking and that gets her ideas rolling of, I could be a matchmaker. And so her business is called Cupid Clara. Her dad finds out and then her dad goes to the teacher who he finds is Carrie Fox. Dad's name is David Gonzalez. And he's like, what is this? Like Cupid Clara, this is stupid. Why would, what, does, what do kids know about relationships? They bicker and the movie goes on. Here's the thing. <laughs> 
this movie is very involved for me to try to tell you to try to give you a synopsis um the movie was conflicting i j i have warring feelings on the inside here's let's start off with the with the cons let's start off with a little bit of the uh critiques if you will it was awkward not in a good way there were long pauses the woman who i don't know if he she played david gonzalez's sister or just a good family friend her acting was horrible she was laughing all the time and i'm like sis there's no reason to be laughing all the time fam like this it's okay to not laugh i mean you can smile but she's just like <laughs> well what do you mean like she literally was talking like that the entire time um and it it it, it there were some there were some um like what in the world how did they do that? Like there was this one scene where Carrie and her teacher friend were at the PTA meeting that David is over. He's over the PTA. And he, first of all, the nerve of him, they were talking. He was like, can we focus, please? I was like, fam, you, this is PTA. This ain't school. Like, chill, bruh, chill. But they sneak out to go to this restaurant during the PTA meeting. But somehow he made it there before that. <laughs> I was like, Hallmark, I love you to pieces and smithereens times 10. But sometimes we can't just do stuff for the sake of the movie and just because you Hallmark. You feel me? So those were the bads. Um, the acting, a little bit of scene cutting. Like there was one scene where they're like, you want to sit? And you can see the seat. See, it was like all the way over there. And then the editing cuts to them on the seat. And I'm like, oof, oof. Now let's go to the goodness about this movie. It gave me all the Valentine's Day feels. I mean, we had Cupid. We had matchmaking. We had the Valentine's Day dance. I love the celebration of Mexican culture. It made me, it reminded me that I am really supposed to be on my P's and Q's about re relearning Spanish. Um, it was a language I took, I took two years of in high, two years in high school. Yeah, two years in high school, two years in college, and then I just let it slip. And then 2019 was when that desire was rekindled. Um, my church at the time, what our building was in a predominantly Hispanic neighborhood. And on Monday nights, we would go out and kind of interact with the engage the community um asking them if they need prayer for anything and most of the times a lot of people that i came into contact with were hispanic and mostly i'm not his i should say mostly spanish speaking um they didn't speak english and it it reminded me like i need i really like it rekindled a desire in me to learn spanish so that i could communicate with the people of that neighborhood and there was, um, there was one Mexican woman at my job that I was at at the time. And so she would help me by conversing with me only in Spanish. And then there was even, a, I literally think it was like a month to six weeks where literally every Monday when I would take a Lyft or an Uber from my job to my church's building, my driver would always be of some type of Hispanic or Latin descent, whether Colombian um puerto rican mexican ecuadorian like it was they were always um from some spanish-speaking country and when they found out that i was trying to learn spanish they would always convert like it was just really really cool and i i definitely fell off of that come covid and um and even this year but this movie like kind of rekindled that for me like i really need to be about my business of being serious about learning spanish so you guys hold me accountable about that if at all um so and that that was a i think that was like a major personal connection for me with this movie and then <laughs> the one scene where i like literally ha <laughs> like like that um so clara's matchmaking business um she be, she got she became so successful in the school that she decided to take it outside of the school to adults and host kind of like a valentine's day i think it's called Dia del Amor y Ustad, or something like that. Like, I forget the, the extra. Dia del Amor, and then something else. But um, 
It was, uh, and ultimately, it was a singles mixer. And she hosted it at her dad's restaurant. <laughs> and so it's the day. It's the night of the mixer. And the mariachi bands are just doing their thing, you know, strumming, strumming for their paycheck, right? And nobody's there. And then the dad, David, he's just like, <clears throat> and y'all, the way he did that and the awkwardness of nobody being there, but the mariachi, but the mariachi band was just so enthusiastic. That was brilliant. That really struck a chord. Like, that made me laugh. <laughs> that really was funny. Um, I'm trying to think, was there anything else that was good? That was it. Those, those are probably my, 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 the goodness points for me. Um, and then of course the play of it being Austin Middle School. Um, I thought that that was, that was cool. Can we talk about her house? Because y'all, okay, her house looks, okay, her house is huge for a teacher. And Seattle is dear to my heart because that's a place, Lord willing, that maybe I'll move to one day and live um, or even visit. And that's a whole other story. But I know for a fact that the standard of living in Seattle is higher than Philadelphia. And the fact that this woman is a middle school teacher with a house the size that she had driving a Mini Cooper, I'm like, sis. Oh, also, another point, because she was driving a Mini Cooper. That's one of my favorite little cars. I love me a Mini Coupe. And it was my favorite color green. So I'm like, you get two points for that. And I'm, I'm peeping Hallmark's kitchens now. I'm, I'm like, okay, somebody's doing something in the water because these kitchens are, are nice. They're still not as dope as um, Snow Kissed and If I Only Had Christmas. Those are my favorite two kitchens that I've ever seen in a Hallmark. Well, and a Timeless Christmas, the top three. If I Only Had Christmas is number one. Snow Kissed is number two. Timeless Christmas is number three. So, and I believe I reviewed all of those movies if you guys want to check those out. Um, but all in all, guys, as an overall crown rating, I'm going to give this movie two crowns. I'm going to give it two crowns. I think the awkwardness and the acting overshadowed a little bit the cuteness and the adorableness that the movie had. It was, it was, it, they, they weren't like... It gave off a darling, like a aww feeling, but I don't think I could fully embrace it because of the awkwardness of the scenes um, and the acting. <laughs> but what did you guys think? I mean, this was, y'all, okay. This was the big kahuna. This is Val the Valentine's Day weekend movie. Now, I know that they, Hallmark is trying to do the most and give us new movies to celebrate love all of February. But they should have put that Tyler Hines and Aaron Krako movie for this weekend. Because you know that's the blockbuster. You know that's the blockbuster. They should have put that. Th and I, I know. And it's funny. Okay, I'm cutting my arms up off. But given the trailers, playing Cupid is legit the only Valentine's Day themed movie that they, that they give us. Beverly Hills Wedding is basically a June wedding series. Uh, mix Up in the Mediterranean looks like a summer movie. And then the Tyler Hines and Aaron Krako movie just looks like a generic Hallmark movie. Like, I... That's why, if you guys watched my Beverly Hills Wedding review, this is why I said, at least, if you want to do the most, then give us two movies. Give us one Valentine's Day theme and just one extra rom-com. But don't... Don't be doing the most. <laughs> now, Mix Up in the Mediterranean is next. I'm not watching it. Jessica Lowndes, though, she looked like she glowed all the way up. I don't know if it's the makeup or the hair, but Sis is doing it. I saw the trailer. I said, okay, Sister Jessica, I see you. Um, but I'm not going to watch that. And then Tyler Hines and the Aaron Craig Cut movie, I still can't get the title right. If it was only you, there was only you, it was only you. If it was, yeah, it's one of those. I'm going to get it right come the actual review, which is the next review that you will see 
of mine. Um, I could also, in fact, in place of Mix Up in the Mediterranean, I did watch a 2020 Valentine's Day movie featuring Bethany Joy Lenz and Luke McFarlane called Valentine Match. I'm going to review that. That was my first time seeing it. Um, and I watched it when I thought I wasn't going to watch Beverly Hills Wedding and I ended up watching it anyway. So, yeah. I'm going to review that for you guys. So be on the lookout for that one. And can we just say, Bethany Joy Lenz is, not only is she my favorite, act, my favorite Hallmark actress, she has the flyest wardrobe with every movie that she, like, she must have some, because I'm like, I'm sorry, I'm cutting myself off again. She, I just, I just don't get it. Like, if you look at her wardrobe in this, I said, sis better do it. And I first noticed it in Just My Type. I think that was the spring movie. That one was either 2019, I think. With um, Brett Dalton, I think his name is. My homie from Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Now, that's a homie who can act. He was also in The Resurrection of Gavin Stone, which he did impeccably in. But we're back. Playing Cupid, Two Crowns. Now, this is a movie that you can do your taxes to. You know? Um, you can have it playing in the background while you're working remotely during these times. Don't vacuum. But um, definitely sweep. If you have a little bit of dishes, do the dishes. Um, but if you need to clean the kitchen, yeah. If you need to tidy up the living room, or if you're on your laptop and you're cleaning your room, playing Cupid is the movie for you. Because when I, t I, I know a movie is good if it can keep me off my phone. And I was, I was texting and on Instagram during this movie. Ugh. But um, yes, that's going to conclude my review of Playing Cupid. Let me know what you guys thought about this movie. Um, and I will see you guys in the review for the Aaron Krakow and Tyler Hines movie.